Well, hello, I'm Mike Festiva. Welcome back. Now, before you click right off this video because you're not interested in sawmills, but you like welding, you might want to stick around. In this video, we're going to cover how to basically salvage metal to build a simple lap siding jig. Like I said, if you're not interested in sawmills, you might find the engineering of this and the fabrication interesting. I'll give some welding tips along the way in the video. This one cost me basically nothing. Probably if you had to go out and buy the metal, it'd be thirty to forty dollars. I think these sell for five hundred to a thousand dollars for the sawmill industry. This one actually has set up on here, so I can run on this mill or my smaller portable mill. And basically, all it is is a cammed adjustable cam positioner that raises and lowers the uh, cant to a high level at a tilt and a lower level at a level cut. And you go through there with the cut procedure, and you get beveled siding. You may wonder what a beveled siding is. Basically, it's siding with a taper from a thin to thick side. And you'll see this traditionally on a lot of older houses built in the last few hundred years. Uh, this is all going to be cedar siding because we're in the northwest. Cedar is pretty plentiful here. But nowadays, a lot of companies are making like hardy board siding, vinyl siding, aluminum siding to mimic this. I like the real deal. You may wonder why you want to build something like this for lap siding. Well, you might want to cover your outbuilding something other than board and batten. You can make this nice beveled siding. But you can also probably offer it as a product. Like a lot of people say they're going to change windows on their older house. And they can't find the right siding to match it because they have really big planks of wood. Well, someone can come to you and say, yeah, I can cut the lap siding. And you can charge a premium for it because it's really hard to find the stuff on the market now. So stick around. Enjoy the video. And uh, we'll wrap it up at the end, talk a little bit more about this, and uh, show the boards laid out so you can see a good uh, example of what it's going to look like on a wall. All right, enjoy the video. So here's this little lap jig I'm building for both of my sawmills. It's going to fit both of them. This is some uh, eighth inch by inch and a quarter, just what I had around angle iron. Some thin wall one inch. These are 50 inches long for my needs. These are 14 inches long. Got them on my fitment table here. They'll weld them together, put another crossbar in over here and over here to fit both different bunk sizes, and weld those next. So I'm using probably 50 to 60% salvage metal on this project, stuff I had laying around here. And uh, I'm going to highly recommend a video that goes back about four years ago, so probably 80-90% of my subscribers have never seen it. It's going to be down below in the links. Definitely recommend checking out where to find free metal. Uh, but watch this video first. It definitely helps if you watch this one through, but check that video out next So I cut these tabs out on the arc droid. These are going to represent the hinge Basically, this is a set and that's a set They fit a 5 16 bolt I'm gonna weld these onto the jig and then we can start on our hinge So you notice one hinge is longer than the other That's so I can actually hang over the edge of one and encapsulate the tubing to keep sawdust from getting inside so I tack weld that longer hinge to the short one just to make sure my hinge is aligned properly. Now I'm grinding off the tack weld. I'm going to shim up this uh, bar that's going to raise and lower the cant, just an eighth inch with some scrap of uh, steel. This will just make sure that I have enough clearance when the bar comes up and down and doesn't hit anything. Adding a little washer now behind the other part of the hinge so when I weld nothing tightens up too much and I'll remove that later. Keep in mind I'm also tack welding everything on here because it's a lot easier to break a tack and remove something than it is to weld something completely out and find you need to change something later. Here I'm running the Arcdroid CNC plasma cutter. find it very useful for prototyping things because you can make changes on the fly. I got a video down below I'll link in the description about not only the Arcdroid and using it, a highly recommended uh, CNC plasma cutter for it, and dry air and the importance of dry air. So check that video out. So I got those little leveling tabs I cut out on the Arcdroid on there. Just a bolt with a nut weld on the bottom and another nut for a jam nut down here. That just sets the height of this. So it always comes back to say zero or level. So like I mentioned earlier, the Arcdroid is really nice for prototyping things. As you'll see in this next part, I'm going to weld on here. I tack weld it, like I mentioned earlier, only tack weld to find that I want to remove it later and remake another part for better performance of this jig. So I cut this bottom one off and I went for this one. I cut some other ones on the Arcdroid that moved that hole a little bit higher. 
it's going to allow me to uh, take advantage of uh, uh, more of the cam on here. This is just a piece of pipe weld on some uh, bar stock. We'll let the rise of this and fall. Fall will be the same, but it will let the rise of this go up quite a bit more. Probably, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so. So like Bob Ross would put it, this was a happy little mistake. I only had a minimum amount of this rod around here, not enough to travel from this side to that side. I had this small square tubing. So just so happens this fits perfectly inside the square tubing. This is scrap stuff I had. Drilled a hole on the end of it. I'm gonna be welding a little nut onto there. The bolt's gonna be able to be a lock bolt for it. Got this side already welded. So the rod's gonna be able to go in here and that's gonna be kind of like a set screw basically to lock that on. And it's gonna be able to allow me to time this cam with that cam so you don't have to get it right the first time when you go to weld everything. Even if it's off a little bit, you can just loosen up the bolt, adjust it on that rod, and it will be in time with this one. So keep in mind, some of the cam mechanisms I kind of designed earlier on, sketched out on a piece of paper, some ideas for the hinge, but a lot of this I'm just working up on the fly here, making the video and making the jig at the same time. So an afterthought, I probably would have moved my whole cam mechanism further in, like another four inches closer to the hinge. That would have gave me a little bit more rise for this, for more extreme lap siding, maybe more taper to it. But actually everything worked out, I'm happy. It's got enough uh, angle for the lap siding for my needs. But if you wanted more of a steep angle, you'd move the hinge in further. It's just trial and error working with uh, prototyping stuff. So I got to stop right here. I built the handle that you can remove so you can take this whole thing apart. It's not welded on. Melted a little piece of tubing I had on here, plastic for the handle. And here's a stopper if I want to adjust this. It won't sound so bad when I get this painted up with grease on it, but that's how it works right now. But there, it doesn't take much to move it up. All right. But yeah, it's got pretty substantial power. Next, what we're gonna do is I cut some tubing. I've done this out of solid bar. I just don't have any half inch bar that I can find around here. So we'll try out these hollow tubes for uh, little can't stops. They're gonna fit back here, get welded on. And the front one is gonna be on an adjusted little piece of uh, inch and a quarter tubing with the bottom cut out with the little adjuster right here. So you can slide it over and tighten the cant down. So I cut off two sections of uh, inch and a quarter tubing. This is eighth inch wall. And I'm gonna remove the section with the seam in the bottom of the part of tubing here. I'm gonna cut that off here and here and hopefully with a little die grinding they should just drop over this then we can put a all the nut on here and do a little t-nut for tool lists on adjustment probably use this stuff on top with a 45 or third degree angle cut on it so you may be wondering why this is built so light duty. I don't really need to support more than a 60 to 70 pound cant. You're never dropping logs on it. You're just dropping square cants on it. I want something simple I could take on and off my mill without getting a hernia. I've checked out the Widmiser lap siding jig and it literally takes two people to move around and it's ridiculously heavy. Yeah, it's built well, but some stuff just doesn't need to be built that ridiculously heavy. I just want to keep it eight to 10 pound jig at tops. So I got those nuts welded onto there. And I'm not going to pick these up because they're pretty hot. They just got welded, but there's some quarter 20 hardware with some little bit of, I don't know, a quarter inch metal rod welded right onto there. Those are going to be for the tool list adjustment for the can't stops lockdowns. So here's the jig. Definitely look a lot nicer when I get it painted. But these are the lockdowns. This holds the back of the can't here. It's kind of got an angle cut to it. This is adjustable. This adjustment for how high you want to make the cant. And these are your adjustment for uh, timing your cams to make sure they stay in alignment and uh, all timed. This is your level adjustment. Figured I'd put it on there just in case. Want to make sure they're both level, even. Handle, super simple. Won't squeak when I get it all lubed up, but uh, first I want to double check it works good, then I'll paint it. So I've never milled lap siding before, so right now I'm actually just testing out the jig, locking it onto my mill, 
want to check out the prototype. I have everything welded out solid at this point. I was pretty happy with the design, but before I put any paint on it, I wanted to put an old junky cant, something that I can just cut into, see how it works and how it performs. And if I need to make any changes, I want to make them before I actually paint it so I don't have to grind off a bunch of paint. So I'm locking down the cant right now. Another thing I want to mention, like I've had uh, kind of built up my tools in my shop over the years. I have nicer tools, but back when I first started out, um, you could still build something like this with some basic tools. I'm going to recommend two videos. One is uh, six affordable tools to get started in metal fabrication. The other one is eight tips to make you a better fabricator. I think those videos would be very helpful if you're interested in fabricating or you already have some skills. You can uh, learn a few more things from that. Right here, I'm programming my set works. I'm dropping it down to uh, make my first cut here. I'm gonna recommend checking out that video if you have a sawmill and you're interested in a set works. It's really, you can get a lot more out of your wood. It's a very nice tool. It makes your sawmill basically turn into a CNC uh, height adjustment so you can get whatever boards you're looking to get out of the mill. Now, I don't know if I got a sequence early on, but I was adjusting how much the um, can't cam canted over with my adjustment early on. I was talking to my dad about it first few times I tried it. And I don't know if I missed a cycle or something, but it turned out pretty good. It looks pretty good. And then it got two of the same boards, so I might have forgot to flip it one of the times. And what I was getting was every other board would be thick and every other board would be right. And I got my uh, set work set to 3 8, so I think I might have missed some timing on one of the movements in there. But I don't like that. Can inconsistent I mean it's consistently inconsistent every other board is thick every other board is thinner like I wanted so I'm gonna take these off of here and try another can out and see if it's if I really just need to program a set works at three eighths and then the next one at quarter three eighths and quarter three eighths and quarter and get on there or if I should just go back to just using a manual scale on the side until they look right I'm not sure trial and error here that's why we use an old junkie can't for this but got a lot of boards out of it So there's a lot of siding right there off of that one can. So the second cant, it kind of came together. I started figuring out what is going on and what I needed to change. So I'll explain that next. So, I finally found some consistency here because this is varying the thickness by an eighth inch between camming up and camming down. That's where the eighth inch difference comes between three eighths and half inch. So, every time again you cam it up, tilt the cant, three eighths. Drop the cam down, you drop the mill half inch. So here's a little example after I first started cutting with that set work. So I had everything set for half inch boards and I would get a thin board, a thick board, thin board, and thick board. I wanted the thinner ones, didn't want these really thick ones. And I just had everything set for half inch down, but figured out every time you cam up, you need to put it uh, in the set works for a thinner board. And when you drop it down, you need to have the set works drop down for a thicker one. After playing around, I tried three eighths for the cam up half inch for the drop down it got better but it still wasn't great finally cam up i realized quarter inch for the set works half inch flat So I'd like to take a moment and give a big shout out to Chris Sand, also known as the Rappin' Cowboy. This is one of his songs he sent to me. This is an instrumental, so YouTube wouldn't hit me with the copyright strike. But most of his songs have really good thought out lyrics and just really enjoyable music. So if you want to support a Montana artist that would definitely like your support, I'm going to put a link below to his music. You can check out a wide range of his styles. And I really recommend maybe downloading a song, buying a song from him, or a whole entire album. I really recommend checking out his music. He's a great dude, too. All right, go check that music out after this. So I got this figured out now. I'm going to raise the mill up. Just did that last cut. 
and it was cammed up and I've been cutting it at quarter inch cammed up and when I'm cammed down on the lobes, I've been cutting it half inch with my set work. So we're gonna raise the mill up. Gonna bring it back, gonna cam down. Oh, I added some springs here, keep this thing from hopping a little bit too. So each one of these little uh, risers have a spring on the side of them now. Bring the mill back. Look, sorry for the screens bouncing. It's uh, it's something to do with the camera setting. So got this set at quarter inch. We're gonna set it over to half inch. Gonna hit the enter button. There we go, ready for our next cut. So if you're newer to my channel, maybe came across in the last year or two, you probably haven't dove into the 100 plus videos I have uh, in the past. I've had the YouTube channel for about eight years now. And uh, what started out this uh, channel was building this sawmill from scratch using old motorcycle wheels and an engine I got from a friend. Salvaged a bunch of metal, including pallet racking for it. And um, there's a whole series on how I built this thing. At the time I was broke, wanted a mill really bad and couldn't afford one. So I started off on building my own and shared with the, how I did it with people in the case someone else wanted to try to build their mill or even add an accessory like a power lift or power feed to it. Um, super useful. Since then I've rolled some more money into things like that set works, but hey man, I saved a lot on the building the mill so I could splurge on the set works and it's been a great machine. So I just got done with a beautiful stack of uh, lap siding. So we're gonna lay this out here on the mill and take a look at it, see how it turned out. So this is just a portion of those boards I milled. I have another six or seven laid off side off the camera over here from that one cant we just milled. This just gives you an idea of what it looks like. Of course, I just laid this on the ground to get the good perspective, but this is always up on siding. And uh, you've seen it before many times, probably painted or fake stuff mimicking this. I don't really feel like painting this stuff when I lay it up. I'm gonna probably put cedar shake oil on it. I like the natural look of uh, raw cedar like that and kind of preserve the color of it. But when you lay the stuff out, you lay the thick edge bottom with the thin edge towards the top, and then you lay the next board on top of it, leaving a overlap of about an inch to an inch and a half, and then thick edge to thin edge and continuous on all the way up the wall. So if rain hits it, it runs down off of one board to the next board and doesn't get inside. It's a nice look. All I have around here is board and batten. I like the look of it, very rustic for outbuildings, but this gives me another option for different style of siding. Now, is it worth spending the three hours or so on some metal on a lap jig like this? I think so. I think it's worth it. I don't really think if I spent $500, $1,000 for a lap jig, I would really feel like I got my money's worth out of it because I don't think it's that much of a game changer with mills. But where I do think it could come in handy is spending, you know, three, four hours or whatever it takes you to build a jig like this to your liking. Uh, to offer that, you can maybe make a little bit of cash on the side, especially if somebody's doing a big remodel on a house with lap siding. You could cut them some custom boards. You probably wouldn't want to get in the habit of a cutting siding for someone's entire house because that's a lot of work. But if they need to come to you and have you cut 10 or 15 custom wide lap siding boards to match what they have in their house because they're doing a remodel and they're fitting in French doors and windows and they need some extra siding to replace on the side of the building, you'd probably be able to charge a premium and uh, you know make a really nice product for the people. Uh, for me, I just have, I'm happy about having some other type of siding for some of the outbuildings here. Uh, with all that being said and done, I'm going to show you a ceiling I did, uh, some salvage lap siding I got years ago. So it's tapered from thick to thin. And I'll show you another ceiling I did with just like 3 8 boards thick all the way through. And they were both laid on like lap on a ceiling. It's really hard to tell the difference when they're up, other than some boards being dark from being old wood and the other stuff being newer. It's really hard to tell the difference. So again, like I said, if I spent $1,000 on a lap siding jig, I don't think I would feel like I got my money's worth because then the day you look at them on the 
wall or ceiling and you really can't tell there's a taper. What I think you're going to gain though with that taper is you're going to get a little bit more out of each cant with that teeter-totter effect. You get thin to thick boards. I think you're going to get a few extra boards per cant. And all said and done, if you get a little bit more product off of the, the cant at the end of the day, it's probably worth it. Well, picking up the shop here, trying to get my welding station so it's kind of not cluttered up so much. Man, this summer I've been so busy. Funny thing is that beginning shots of me welding that uh, rusty metal up to make that jig was way back in the spring. I started that when it was pretty cold in the spring. Plan was to use it all summer long, cut a bunch of siding. I got so busy with so many other things. Family, my other job, other YouTube videos, uh, hiking, all kinds of obligations and a bunch of woodworking stuff. So I have just finally in September got around to painting it, testing it out, making sure everything worked right and shooting the shots for the video to finalize it and show the lap siding working. Yeah, it's been uh, been a busy summer. I'm actually looking forward to things slowing down a little bit, slower pace and cooler days and rainy days where I can start getting back in the shop again working because getting all my welding stuff set up in here again, I've really been missing working in here. It's just been so many other stuff going on. It's hard to be in here when the weather's really nice and I got outdoor stuff to do. But when it starts getting wet outside, I'm gonna be in here working on more projects. My plan this fall is to do a small series, like a four or five part series of building the quad truck number two. It's going to be a four by four model. I have an old Polaris I bought like two years ago for the project, never got around to it. You recall last winter I fixed up my old quad truck and gave it to my friend Dave. So yeah, it's time to move on to a super practical little 4x4 just for utility quad with a little dump bed on the back for just utility work. So we're going to start on that this fall. So just organizing the shop, cleaning up after the summer, just lots of different projects. It's become a catch-all in here. So time to clean up the shop and get it ready for fall. Until next time, there will be lots of videos coming up, a lot of fabrication stuff, and we'll be putting the camper back on the mini truck. And of course, there'll be some more sawmill videos. So until next time, take care. Goodbye.